Audio Frontier. This is Football Daft with Stephen Purden. Midfield Dynamo and average actor. Chris Toll. Target man. Suspicious character. And... Welcome along to Rangers Daft versus Celtic Daft. Now we do this, if you've not heard, been on our Patreon before when the podcast used to live there, we do this after every old film where we combine both Rangers Daft and Celtic Daft and bring them together for a big old fight. There are a couple of men sitting with big smiles on their faces, there's a couple of men looking very sad. So, let's introduce the tag team, shall we? In the red, white and blue corner... Mr. Stephen Shelsu Bob Purden and Mr. Graham Grado Steveley, the Staunch Brothers. How are we, boys? Brilliant. Brilliant. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and fighting out of the green and white corner. Ryan, producer Ryan Gallagher and Christopher Shagger Toll. How are we feeling, boys? I'm just going to call you the boys because that's your tag team name. How are you boys doing? Well, he's. Right, mate. I, think <laughs> right. I, I, I think I might need to run away for this soon, this podcast. Right, okay. Now, Stephen Purden has been like a fucking coiled spring for the last... <laughs> right, we can't play too much of that because we'll get it done by... Uh, the <laughs> take the YouTube money off us. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah. that's an all one of store office. <laughs> <laughs> right. Flip a, I want to flip a coin here and see who we're going to go to first after the old firm as we look back at it. Right, heads or tails, Stephen? Uh, heads. Do you want to go first on your first, uh, feelings on the mat, on the game or second? No, I think I think it's only fair. Like The past two or three weeks, Toll's been jumping on my smile and a nosy accent and all that, so I'll let him take the floor to begin with. Cause he's been, Christopher there's been Toll! A, there's been a lot of noise for Toll the past few weeks and... So let him go first. Go. Christopher Toll, you have the four. What did you make of Sunday's game? I don't know. I've never seen it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, you know what? The best team lost. That's a, that's a bottom line. The best team lost. Strong words, Christopher Toll. Ryan Gallagher. <sighs> mate, I don't even know why I'm here. I, I honestly don't want to talk about this game. <laughs> Did you really, say like I, daft, mate? I know, mate, but I would have I would have patched it this week if it was not for use. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, see what right, Chris said though. Like, I don't think anybody in this game was particularly good. I, I don't think anybody played particularly well. We seemed to just kind of get about twenty five minutes in, and the players went in their cell. All we done was play with the ball across the back line. You don't score felt there. So I think was it sixty five percent possession or something like that of the game that we had. So it shows that we were trying to do what we normally... Aye, but fucking 98% of that was in our back four. That's, what I'm, it. That's what I'm saying. That's what Ryan's saying, Chris. <laughs> oh, shit, man. Can we go back and do Celtic daft again? No. <laughs> right, let's come to the Rangers boys then. Great, let's come to you first. We'll keep Stephen stewing for an hour wee bit. What did you make it, mate? Oh, tremendous. I <laughs> think. <laughs> my heart was in my mouth. I must admit, going into this game... I wouldn't say I wasn't confident, but obviously Sunday morning, waking up and realising and, and checking Twitter and Facebook and all the rest of it, who's not going to be in the team, refreshing every two minutes, finding out the news about Patterson's not going to be there. And I've got to admit, I'm sure the majority of other Rangers fans, when they heard that Balogun was playing right back, we all shot ourselves. Yeah. And McCrory, I watched him last year a couple of times. Playing for Livingston, I saw him play against Celtic, and I thought I wasn't I wasn't too confident with him being in goals either. I must admit, I totally that gave me the fear. But looking back on hindsight now, I need to remember it takes you back to the days when when Walter Smith was a manager, and he would play folk out of position, and it'd be surprise starts. I think the team on Sunday, I think in some peculiar way, the 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 injuries and the COVID stuff was to your benefit as a team. I think the players went out there and they, and they fought for the for their captain, for their goalkeeper, for their manager that wasn't there. And it doesn't matter 
what possession you've got, whether it's 66, 67, 80, 90 percent, it's how many times you put the ball in the back of the net, son. <laughs> <laughs> and we done it one more than you. Stephen uh, Purden clapping his hands there. What would you like to add, sir? <clears throat> Aye. I agree with you, though. Galvanised us, I think. And I, I, I admit, I wasn't confident. I hadn't seen much of Celtic. I've been deliberately staying away from watching them because I've heard so much coming through their camp that they're playing really, really well. They're playing this free-flowing brand of football. Uh, and I need to admit, I was pretty underwhelmed when I seen them in the flesh on Sunday. I felt we won most of the battles. I think when you're missing your captain... Your second choice right back, your first choice goalie, who's so inspirational between the sticks, your second choice goalie, your manager isn't there, you get no defenders on the bench, and you go out and you stop a team who's been playing all this great football. It just showed the togetherness, it showed why we're champions. I think the substitutions we made throughout the game were pretty clever as well. Lundstrom added a bit of steel, Arfield stuck to his task when he came on. Balligan playing right back, who's a centre-half playing right back, keeping the man of the moment, Kyogo, very quiet. Uh, I, I think the atmosphere is up there with one of the best I've ever heard at Ibrox. It's, it was Parma-esque. It was one of the best, of, and it was like a old-school, old firm where two teams slugged it out, but I think Paul said the best team lost. I strongly disagree, I think. When you have to deal with the circumstances, we had to deal with the trip to Armenia in midweek. I think the best team out there, the team that wanted it, Mayor, got it and won. Chris you Ryan. That, you said earlier, Stevie, that he's won most of the battles. It must be unusual for you to win battles and not have a match after it. <laughs> <laughs> mate, mate, me and my pals are marching like fuck to the motor, wasn't it? I was a- Chris Ryan, Stephen used the way the word there underwhelmed when he when talking about the Celtic performance. Um, what did you make of of the Celtic performance from previously what you've seen over the, the, the start of the season? I think a lot of the players kind of went into their cell, to be honest with you, John. Um like Ryan said after about after about 20 minutes they went into their cell, it was it was just a, they were expecting immediate results like going out in the first few minutes and expecting to be a couple of goals up and when it didn't happen, they kinda they kinda I don't know, went like, I can't even get a different phrase for it. Just like they went into their cell, it was they were fucking so many of them posted missing. What well, um was, well, was Valston playing? Was Valston playing? Aye. Aye, Aye. 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 That's how that's how Ryan Kent done fuck all. Aye, so hang oh, Ryan uh, Kent done fuck all because he's He's kind of an injury, mate, but he still came away with a few points. It, 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 yeah, see, in fairness, yeah. actually, from a, def- from a defensive point of view, I think both teams set up really, really well in terms of the, what they did defensively. I mean, Celtic obviously had the, their own problems putting Jurovic in at, um, uh, left back, which is an unfamiliar position for him. But I thought, for the, the you know, from a neutral standpoint, I thought both defences were on complete complete top. And as you said, Stephen Balligan was outstanding, kept uh, Furashi uh, very, very quiet. Um, boys, come back to Celtic boys. I mean, there's been a lot of talk of Ange Ball and stuff um, going into the game. What happened to it? Stephen made the point, John, about... Um... Celtic have been playing this kind of free flowing football and Chris has been saying it for a few weeks. That that's not been a lie. We have been. You know, the, the games that have played, albeit against lesser opposition in the league, um, Dundee and St. Mirren, listen, the performances we put on would probably beat most teams in the league that we played on that um those games, other than Rangers. The first game against Alkmaar. No, why that football would have beat Rangers, Ryan. I know that's what I'm saying. The Rangers would be the only one for me that would be a match for the football we played at that time. If it was anybody no, else in the it league... It wouldn't have been, no. We would have fucked them if we had played football the way we'd been playing. But the problem so, is then... It's co- that's why, why, why they've not managed to do it is the issue. Aye, but is that... Is that so, so, do you Rangers know, played, so, so, so do you not get any credit to Rangers there at all, no? Aye, Rangers, Rangers nullified Celtic, so fair enough to that, to that mm-hmm. point. But I still think over the course of the 90 minutes, Celtic were the more likely team. The fact that Rangers came away with a win, it was, like John said, straight after it, it was a smash and grab. And I think I think that's accurate to say that. You know, but like you said, Rangers went out there and they done their job. They nullified the team. 
uh, to, a, to a point, but over the 90 Celtic were the better side. I, 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 wouldn't, I, wouldn't dis, I wouldn't disagree when it comes to possession and stuff, but I think, Grado and Stephen, come back to you, do you think it was tactically, Rangers got it spot on? For me, they, they seemed to get it tactically, and I thought their game management was excellent. Yeah, the, 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 uh, second, the, the second, see as soon as we went, see as soon as we went, I go up, I was very confident, because you've seen but, the way the yeah. second half, Davis mm. and Kamara were in total control as opposed to the first half. I'd say the first half, Celtic's midfield were getting far too much space. They were dictating it a bit. I think the second half, Kamara and Davis showed their class. I think they just, they controlled it. We, we got the goal. It reminded me a wee bit of the New Year game at Ibrox last season. Right. Aye. It reminded me that. And I wouldn't, the second half, I wouldn't sit, I wouldn't sit and go, it was a smash and grab. Because I think the second half, I think Rangers... They were in control quite a bit. I think Celtic. Last ten minutes, minutes. Last ten minutes. For Celtic. Last ten minutes. It was kind of natural. They're pushing for the equaliser. Do you know what I mean? But I think when Fura Hash went through the middle, these were a bit more dangerous. Mm. But I still think. Mm. I think it was kind of fifty-fifty. I wouldn't come away and go. It was a smash and grab. Celtic bossed us, and we hung on. Maybe hung on at the end, but I think is it over the course of the game? I think we had our chances as well. We got him behind staff. It looks like a bomb scare. If, I, if we if we start getting on far on, on all, all cylinders, you're saying if you play the football, you would have fucked us. I can turn around and go, if we had a full team, we were playing the football, we are capable of playing, we would fuck you. So it works. Well, I'm just saying fuck you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I think it was yeah, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm trying to be nice, man. Don't be aggressive, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're writing right right what you're saying, but it's I suppose it is a case of I've seen butts and right, the, mate, mate, mate. The hang is, here's a here's a part I'm going to make, right? The hang is, right. You have played this football you keep going on about the last couple of weeks, right? Against a team who got promoted through the back door effectively, right? Dundee, against a St. Mirren team who had 10 men for mm. 70 minutes, right? Mm. And both of these games were at were in your own fucking stadium. Your team then goes to play the team that are the champions. And a fucking cauldron of noise. And let's be honest, he's fucking shot the bed. I mean, you, you've left out a couple of other games here, you know, for the few. Aye, he's played Hearts as well. Who got promoted? No, I'm talking about Alkmaar. Aye, mate, the Dutch, mate, the Dutch mate, your team, mate, mate, your team's got a hundred percent fucking loss record away from home under Ange. Yeah. Compared to a hundred percent win record, but. He's got a 50% yeah, home, home, home record, sorry. Am I right in hearing it saying a start that Celtic haven't won away from home since February last year? No, I, we beat that. We beat uh, the, the Czech team away from home. I've I seen that, John. I've seen that start that people were, were kind of banding about. And see, to be fair, I don't even think it's a decent enough comparison to go away. He's only won since February last year because, let's be honest, we all know what happened last year. Yeah. We were absolutely dross. So, Did we not win a game, an away game, for February last season? No, not away. I think it's away in the league. Oh, I think it's it is. in the league, Chris. It's in the league. Aye. A, a, a league game away from home. We haven't won since since February. Um, that, that doesn't surprise me, though. It doesn't yeah, surprise I mean, me. Like, that. It did surprise me a wee bit when you said that. <laughs> we, we were the, way, the way that the narrative and the media has been, it's been a total fucking disastrous start for Angels, right? Yeah. Celtic have won 50% of their games. You just six. I mean, Stephen, is that not down to going by the fact that Rangers last season were unbelievable and Celtic have got this massive build on in the summer? Yet when we come back, obviously they're going to talk about Rangers' performance because it's dipped much below than they were last mm-hmm. year. We, we performed so far this season far better than I expected us to perform. I thought we were going to have a massive rebuild job and I thought we were going to be struggling for second. In this league, in all honesty. Well, mate, well, mate, he's a sixth. No, I know, but mate, there's a full yeah, season. Yeah, but do, full do, season. Yeah, can I ask you this? Can I ask you this? I think it's a psychological thing as well. I personally, in terms of, I know you, t- told you were saying you thought that Celtic were the better team. I thought it was a game of two halves. I thought Good the first that. half, Celtic at half time, you would say would, would have been a happier team with the two. Second half, Rangers were much more controlled. However, I, I feel as well, and I know you you were going on about Ryan Kent doing fuck all on Sunday, he, he didn't really do much, you're right, and he is carrying an injury, but I think Kent puts the fear into Celtic as well, and I think there is a fear for some of the Celtic players, the fear of the Rangers players, there was just a couple of wee bits, a couple of wee bits of happen, Goldson just getting right in some of their faces and get up, get fucking up, no, they carry on, 
And I'm thinking it could be a psychological thing as well. We've, we won that. We won the psychological game on the park. Aye, and I, I, I think, like, I was saying that's the best point you've ever made on the show, Gredo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, I was saying it last week as well to noise you up because I wasn't confident in this game, right? But you look at it, man, it's like what I just said a minute ago and what Dado was saying, like two goalies out, Tav out, the manager no there, Kent carrying an injury, no defenders on the bench. He's having a beat it since 2019. He's come to Ibrox, we're depleted, got a lot of big players missing. We've just been a fucking horrible trip to Armenia, we're in honking form and you still can't beat us. Steve, see when you're saying about a kind of depleted team there, like I know there was a lot made about players that were out and stuff like that, but see taking away the goalie and obviously Balogun having to go in it right back, mm-hmm. it was it was still quite a strong range. Right, mate, mate, we you know we I mean? we we'd need defenders on the bench, but we're doing our bare ass. We've need no, defenders no, no, I, on I, the bench. I, I get I'm talking that. about the team as a whole, not just a level on the pitch. I mean, yeah. you, you, you do look at the bench, though, Stephen, and you have to say, when you, I mean, that's what we've talked about on Rangers staff, is the strength and depth of Rangers squad now, because you've got aye, the, right, the bench, can, can, Aji, Sakala, can, Arfield, right. But can, but can any of the two Celtic boys not turn in and go, that must have hurt, that was a big chance for you, sir, the form we've been in and the players that are missing. Is well, we not? were on the ropes. Aye. Well, they're fully taken. So, so there, what Gredo's saying, is it just psychological that you just don't know how to beat us anymore? You need to take it. We 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 had a few injuries as well. Do you know yeah, I mean? I mean, in fairness to Chris as well, you look at the, the Celtic bench and you look down who they've got in, in available. Montgomery, Argahide. I love how every time we've asked this man, John John pipes in. Fairness to Chris, fairness to Ryan, man. You're getting oh, called a Tim on. You're, <laughs> man, you've been get, you've been getting called then. a Tim on Twitter, and you're showing it tonight, man. <laughs> Don't you let start. Let the boys talk. Listen, I am a neutral. I am balanced. Let's just talk about. Well, the let game. the boys talk. Is it psychological? You just don't know how to beat us anymore. I would, I would say so. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, mate. I've got absolutely no worries about this season. <laughs> I, think, I think over the course of the season, we'll, we'll show it have been the better team and we'll right, win the league. Right, so you, right, right, <laughs> right. So, fuck right, right, wait a minute. You always minute, do that. You always wait, do that. Wait, wait a minute. For the last two weeks, I think it's on video, past two or three weeks, I'm expecting nothing this season. I'm no, 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 no. I say I don't want any games with any expectations. Right, but no, you've got no fear. He's a bonny. I don't get myself built up. And if we lose, then be pure gutted about it. That's what I'm saying. I'm cool. going in cool. with, the, with the, the mindset, I can't change what's going to happen here. I'm just going to support the team and enjoy watching them. And you're that's what cool. I'm You're raging. I'm raging that we get beat, aye. Aye, right, good. I just want to so, get that. Right, uh, Chris Ryan, uh, Celtic outdone by a set piece again. I mean, it just doesn't seem that they've learnt from last season. I mean, it, it just seems to be the Achilles heel for Celtic. What, what, I mean, it was brilliant delivery from Barisic. I mean, see, that, that, see John. See yeah, on, on that. Like, aye, but see to that that was a great header. That was a good. That was a great goal. That wasn't. A, I've seen people going, "Oh, this Celtic player was at a position. This guy was at a position." Hellander just got up higher than anybody else, mate. Like that's that's a tough one that happens in football. These are goals you concede. But in, mate, in a game of but mate, I think Hartson made a good point, mate. Come on, he's got a fucking he's got a fucking ten year run, and Nadie's picked him up. No, and then, you know what? Then Starfield had Starfield had to leave his own man mm-hmm. to try and get between, uh, get between uh, Hellander and was it? I think it was Balogun or, or Goldson, maybe Goldson. to try and clear the ball, and. He, Everybody's saying that that goal was his fault. It was not fucking Starfield's fault at all, man. Chris, you were rattling stats off last week on, on the main show on Football Daft. The uh, hundreds of shots, you know, they'd had like across the, the last couple of games. I can't remember. Seventy what it was. shots. Seventy shots. Seventy odd shots. I mean, how surprised were you boys that you didn't even get a shot out until the eightieth minute on target? Oh, see when fucking Odson Edwards get his shoes in the wrong fucking feet. That doesn't help matters, does it? What the fuck? Uh, here's a question. What is going through that boy's head? I mean, is it that... He, he, he's too lax. He's too lax with it. Think, he's, he's you know, same I, I thought it was... Like, because I think Christy was screaming at him. It was about... I just a wee bit before the goal. Christy screaming at him for no squaring the ball, right? And I think it's just went through his head that, oh, I need to square the ball here even though no, I'm in front no, of the goal. Your- 
No, John, you're thinking of the wrong one. That's that's Kyogo's one you're talking about right, later on. Right. No, we're talking about Edward's one when it comes off his heel. In the right, first in the half, tw- I have no idea what the fuck he's trying to do, man. But it, it's the problem with Edward. He, he thought it was too easy. I, I take it. I take it. He's one of his because obviously, you know, Tall always has a go at me for watching Celtic TV and that. But for the hash, <laughs> he's played every other game. Well, the majority of games through the middle. Mate, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll and, be honest with you. And oh, Edward is not interested. All right, mate. I'll be honest. Interested. I, I didn't have a problem before the game. When I seen that formation coming out with Eddie up top and Keogh out, le- out left, I didn't have a problem with it at the start um, because we did play that a couple of games ago and it worked out quite well. Keogh was quite good doing, doing that side. But it was very apparent by maybe kind of 50 minutes or something like that in the second half that that wasn't working and it had to be changed sooner than it did. Um, and you noticed it when, when it did change, when Keogh went through the middle, he, he's got this knack of just, he's dead quick. For a, for a standing start, he's very, very quick. He's in behind defenders. He's looking for balls around the back. Eddie was negating us that. And I think that's what Kyogo does quite well. You've seen it, John said there about the first one when he's no squared it. I wouldn't have squared it, Christy. You know, a striker takes that shot because you're in a decent position. And it was an all right shot that he took. The second one, John, you were talking about, I agree with you on that. He did think, because Christy had been screaming at him, that he had to square it. Rather yeah. than take a shot, it, it was almost like he get the two mixed in, you know, pass one, shoot the other. But um, it's I would have liked to have seen how the game would have went if that Edward goal had went in after twenty five minutes. Because oh man, he's, been... he, he's, he's must be ill. Ah, mate, he must right. be ill. You I'm watch right. that game and he's you know the, the you, you know the, the best team and all that early game and if Edward hit the ball and it went in the back and it a different game, he's must be sick. <laughs> you, 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 you Great, Stephen. Let's come back to you. Let's talk about the performance of Robbie McCrory. Brilliant performance from him. Um, kept I love, I part. love the fact he had that safety net for Kyogo. That will, I mean, he didn't really have much to do in the game, but that will do him the world of good. That will do him the world of good. I think for a young boy, the night before, knowing he's starting an all forum game, the way Celtic have been playing and being portrayed in the media, he must have thought he was going to be busier, but. It was a it was a good save. I'm glad he had that save to make. I'm being serious. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I, no, seriously, I, I know what you mean as, as well, Bob. It was that sort of. I don't. I, I don't think he was that busy. No, he, he wasn't busy. But you're right. And when when he did save that shot for Hugo, I thought that's exactly what he exactly was what mind. I wanted exactly to do. Exactly. And then I became a lot more confident because I thought well, he'll be in a high with this man because he was probably waiting on that shot as a goalkeeper. You're standing there waiting for the the first real big. Aye. And the longer the game goes make. on. Aye, exactly. The longer the longer the game goes on, also interesting to see some of his McGregorisms. Uh, what what you've got to be impressed, I think, is the speed that he comes off his line and you know. Aye, well, aye, He's rapid, but McGregor would have been sitting with a cigar, proud as a punch his apprentice because he got Edward booked. That was brilliant. <laughs> that was, was right out of his, right his playbook, wasn't it? Aye, I heard, that's what me and my mates were sitting saying. That was right out there in McGregor book, man. It was. Yeah. That's too. That, that, that's. Be... that's um, there's, no, there's another stat about the McCrory brothers. I've both kept clean sheets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and goals for Rangers. Ross with angles and Chagger get sent half member. I mean, I, I know a big performance from you for you boys as well. And you, it was one you were all, oh, I think all Rangers supporters, and you saw Rangers put a tweet out. Them, the club of them put out themselves, Balgan going in at right back, and uh, people shining himself. I mean, he has played there obviously in his career before, but how impressed with with his performance were you? Aye, the last time he played there for us, he got subbed at half time down at Park Heath. So mm-hmm. that's right. Me and the boys were sitting going, oh fuck, because I was. Genuinely, like everybody else, expecting Nathan Patterson to start. So I sat, me and my mate, sitting in the motor before it, the team sheet comes out. Already was quite apprehensive. I wasn't confident the way we've been playing and Celtic have been playing well. And then you see Bargain right back. You're obviously fearing the worst because the pace Celtic have got up top. But no, the guy went out there and they absolutely bossed it and deserved the man of the match. Yeah. Um. Let's talk about the gap then, because we've, this has been the first old firm. I'm going to ask you both is both supporters, Grado, uh, Steve, I'll come to you first. Do you think the gap has been caused from last season, or is it the same? Uh, or yeah. more? Is it more? 
What, what do you mean in terms of in terms of the, the Celtic team that you saw? That you are, are you more worried about that Celtic team that you saw? Celtic, 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 Celtic looked better. They looked they looked they looked more capable going forward at times. They looked more a purpose about them. Uh, they were obviously going to get better. I mean, there was lots of players that didn't want to be there. Celtic only got just stand still and no strength and no get better. Uh, as in the gap, I don't know, man, because we didn't we, we didn't have our fucking we just had to roll the sleeves up and battle already. We didn't have a fucking full team out, so it's hard to tell. You know what I mean? I don't know. I, it's too early in the season. I can tell. See, Celtic have obviously got better for last season, and I, and I do think Postecoglou. I mean, he's. I certainly think the Celtic players play for him. See, just watching that wee video package about him before the game, you can tell what, what kind of guy he is. I took a look for that. Like, I can see these players are about right up for playing for him. There's no doubt that they have improved for last year, but again, I just think it's maybe just a, a psychological thing right now that Rangers are number one in terms of coming to old firm games. See, see that for for a hash especially, right? See what you Ryan's can tell he's a player, man. I see what Ryan said there, I agree with that. See, we haven't through the middle. Celtic will probably batter quite a lot of teams. The majority of them. Aye, they will. They will. Uh, all forum games this season, I think, are going to be very, very important, man. Very important. So you think it's going to be tight? It's not going to be a walk for Rangers this it's season? It's not going to be 25 points. It's, not, it's, going, it's going to be a lot tighter, I'd say. Mate, mate, we're, we're sixth. I know you, sir. Ryan, Chris, is that you, are you finally having some fucking input? Told you this at last. <laughs> Ryan, what are you into? What are you into? I was eating a cookie, mate. Oh, fucking sit and eating and watch the Terry, man. He, he, he eating his missus profits, man. Ryan, Chris, let's come profits, to let's, let's come to you then. And uh, <laughs> what did you make of the, the? Do you think the gap is the same? Do you think it's? Do you think you're closer to the Rangers now than you were? What do you think? I, I think that the advancements that we've made in such a short period of time is incredible. Right. Yeah, going, going through what we've done last season. Um, it's, like I say, is a, obviously I've maybe reacted a wee bit there, but like I say, is I think over the period of the season, you'll be able to see just exactly what he's trying to do now. The fact that the, the window's nearly closed now and we've not got an extra defender or a left back in, is worrying to me, to be honest with you. Um, we can't wait until October for uh, Julian to come back and Starfield, maybe his name, started the best, but I like what I see so far in Stephen Welsh. I think he's a, I think he's a good defender. And I don't know, if, if he's going to have faith in, in youth, then... You know, if Starfield keeps going the way he's going, then he's maybe going to need to bring um, Dan Murray in for that. Uh, just as long as he doesn't bring Beaton in, man, I, I don't care. But, but I think over the over the piece, it's going to over the length of the season, you'll find out exactly how good that is. And like I said, if if I'm just still there at the end of the season, getting ready for the start of next season, I think you can consider it a successful season because the fans only have chased them out. Okay, uh, Ryan, um, what, what are you making of it? Uh, do, what improvements need to happen in Celtic? Does he need more time? Is that all that's need? I, I think Andrew get the time. I don't think that he's he's done much wrong since he's come in. Um, like I've said a couple of times on this podcast tonight, he or we are far better than I thought would be at this stage. Um, I thought we were going to have a massive rebuild on. I thought we'd, we'd be competing for second place at this this season, I thought would be so far off it behind Rangers because of the players that we were having leaving. Um, the, the, just the overall rebuild of the club, we change our management above Ange as well. Um, but look at the team, you know, that game at the weekend, uh, if that's what we're going by as a gauge, I think there's there's one change to that starting lineup, and it's Kyogo through the middle and no Edward, who doesn't want to be there. If you've got Christie out in the left going up against Balogun, it might be a different story. Kyogo's not going to take a man on. So I think small changes like that, for me, show that I'd be more confident with that being the team. So if we played this game tomorrow, for example, and that's the one change you made, we brought somebody else into midfield, I think it'd be a completely different game. Well, for Ryan Christie's signed for Bournemouth, so if we played it tomorrow, we'd be fucked for him and him in the left. Well, <laughs> this, this fucking team you on. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. And I agree with you, Ryan. I think if we played this tomorrow, it'd be a different story all the game. Which is... I don't think the gap is as big as I thought it was going to be. And I right. don't think we've got as far to go. Um, I do think there's players that we need to get in, which, like I said, we're now, what, two hours away from the window closing three hours. Yeah. And we're no looking like getting them in. I think it's going to be a bit more of a challenge than than it should have been. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Are you confident that Chris, you're going to win the league? If you asked me on Saturday, I would have said I. Right. You know, I'm, I, I'm less confident now. I think we've. I, I think if it clicks eventually this season, then the Mogi Rangers a good game at New Year. I think if it if it clicks again and we play that football that we, we can play and we have played for the past few weeks, even against teams like Alkmaar, you know, if we can play that football, we'll give Rangers a game. But it's just if we've got the players now with a couple that have went out and the replacements coming in, if they hit the ground running, fine. If not, then it could be a bit more of a struggle. Yeah, um, Stephen Grado. Uh, just in the fact, all of you. Well, I have a quick word on the crowd. I mean, Stephen, you said it was the best atmosphere. Did it miss that Celtic element? No, no, being there, Stephen. Do you think? I thought it was maybe gone because I'm a fan of both. Uh, both fans having uh, both teams having their fans there. But honestly, God, man, that atmosphere on Sunday was it was special, man. It was special. The place was absolutely bouncing, brilliant. Yeah, and there was no. The, I mean, obviously, you, we've talked about on Rangers daft. You know, the the Rangers supporters can sometimes, you know, use. Were actually last season quite happy with the fact there was no crowds in because you felt the pressure was off the players. There was no points where the the, the crowd was swayed to turn. Or you didn't feel that, no. Uh, what 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 Grado said earlier. I think the whole thing that's happened yeah, you know, the past week with the whole COVID situation as well. I think the team, it galvanised the team, but I think the fans galvanised the team on Sunday right. as well. So I think there was, the fans were just right for the fucking first whistle. Before the first whistle, the place was bouncing, man. It was bouncing. And we also um, kind of, just not to cut you off, Bob, but obviously the kind of talk that even I said last year, the fans, Rangers not being able to perform in front of a crowd, that kind of was... Oh, that's bad. That's been up to the bad. Yeah, that's gone, man. That's gone. Aye. That's yeah. absolutely gone. Um, right, okay, let's get to it then. Uh, come to Celtic first, uh, Chris and Ryan. Uh, let's get your Celtic daft uh, rated first of all. Who was the best player in the park for Celtic? Uh, fuck. Uh, Celtic daft. Uh, I'm, I'm torn between two. For a, I thought I thought Ralston had a decent game. Again, it wasn't the best game he's played this season, but I thought he played all right. But I also thought getting chucked in on his debut, Juranovic at left back, I thought he'd done pretty well. Then that side, it's quite a tough one to get chucked into out of position. Um, but I thought he'd done all right as well. So I'm, I'm kind of torn between the two. Okay. Chris? I think I'll go for Juranovic. Right. Just for all the same reasons that Ryan said, you know what I mean? It's a, it's a daunting task to go into a cauldron like that on your debut playing out of position so aye, aye. Um, I'll go for him Okay and Celtic Dafty Edward Edward, Edward. Double for Edward well we'll get into the transfers in a minute that may not be a Dafty anymore for East um, Stephen Grado uh, Celtic Rangers Daft rated for you Alligan Alligan Alligan, oh. easy one for you to do. Apparently, this is what happens when uh, you don't get the press into the, the media bit anymore. Apparently, everybody stood up and gave him a standing ovation when he came into the <laughs> press room. Imagine fucking Graham Spears and Hugh Keevans doing that. <laughs> funny, man. Um, and uh, who is... There any Rangers Darties for you? Oh, uh, nah. A hard one. Nah, they all. I think on Sunday they were all... I would say if you're taking maybe into account Thursday as well, mm. the game was rotten. I'd maybe say uh, Haji, Haji maybe, but yeah. I'll... yeah, we didn't we didn't get the chance to touch it on the the European games because um, uh, on Rangers staff we don't we'd normally deal with that. Aye. But just quickly, Stephen, just shite was it? I oh fucking horrendous! I'd rather just stay in there. <laughs> And I'd uh, rather just stayed in the studio with you and Paul on Thursday. <laughs> I thought about him for that. It was fucking rotten. The worst game of football. Like... Before you went on, what's that? You were having a rare tear before you left for the game. I know. The fucking <laughs> low point of the day was going home watching the fucking game. I did as well taking you up the road and fanning about for a couple of hours. It was shocking. <laughs> um, we're recording on uh, Tuesday. Um, 
Let's just uh, go over quickly as transfer deadline is only three hours away. Um, Rangers first and foremost. Doesn't look like much business being done uh, from a Rangers perspective. Cedric Itan out and Loney. You surprised at that, boys? I'm surprised no. at that. I'm no. surprised at that, Bobby. No. No. He doesn't get looking, man. No. No. I don't know, mate. I, I just, I just, I th- I'm not saying it's a bit dodgy, but he's not. No, right. it's dodgy because there's no cover there. You're going to have to rely heavily on roof. And hopefully his backup, like Roof, Roof and Morelos are your two you've got left. The four's going to get used sparingly. So if we don't bring anybody in, it's a bit dodgy. But do if you're asking, am I surprised he's away? No. Really? There must be. Do you think they've, they've got, I mean, we, we're three hours away. Do you think they've got someone up their sleeve, Stephen, to bring in? Because they wouldn't let him go if they don't have someone. Maybe. I think they have. I think, look, every transfer a football manager makes a gamble. Gerard made a lot of transfers the last few years. Some of them work, some of them don't. Itton's not working. It's not working. It's not. Right. He's just. I, don't know. Know. He's not, he's not, he's, I wouldn't go as far as that, but I don't know. Do you know he's, he's, been had like has he, he's not had a run, though, has he, in the side, I, really? Mate, there's been games where we play Cove Rangers, Ibrooks in the Cup, and the foes in ahead of him. He doesn't even get a look in in these games. And do you know what I was looking at his stats today? Do you know, he's, I think he's got like four goals and 48 appearances or something. Really? He's just, he's not for me. I just, my personal opinion is, it's just not working. Maybe I'm, up. maybe I'm still thinking about the the Motherwell game last year. Aye, when he came off the bench. Two Motherwell games actually was there no two, two Motherwell games. Aye, Motherwell game at Fort Park. I think I've still got that in the back of my head, thinking. But you're right, he was get, he was give, he was given ample amounts. Do you of think time. there'll be business done then, Stephen? Do you think there'll be business done for me? I've got a feeling. There is something to happen at Ibrox tonight, aye. Yeah, because the thing is, I think it, no, no one will get suit. I think it happened in the last time, last transfer, we, there was a couple of signings and it was just, you know, kind of last minute, 10 minutes to go, yeah. they were going to announce something. Mm-hmm. If my memory serves me correct. Well, this big, you, you don't get a full deal until the next morning. Aye, is it no six o'clock tomorrow morning or something like that? That it's midnight, midnight, right. it midnight. Why is it called a transfer window and not a transfer door? I saw this question on Twitter today. I don't know, understand why it's not called a transfer door. Because you can see in for both ends. That's maybe true. Yeah, that's, maybe. that's why maybe. you're the man. That's it. Uh, let's go to the Celtic. Let's go to the Celtic boys now. A uh, bit of dealing's been done here. First of all, let's go to the outgoings. Um, Lee Griffiths away to Dundee. Are you happy to see the back of him? Yes. Yes, Ryan's just shrugging his shoulders like mm. irrelevant, mate. Irrelevant. Okay. Um, the other two uh, still to be completed, but it looks likely apparently he's cleared his medical at Crystal Palace. Austin Edward away at Crystal Palace. Are you surprised he's not went to a bigger club? Ah, not really. No, after the last year. No. You see, if we had sold him last year, he would have went to a bigger club. But that that season there, see if the Crystal Palace manager's got a. a if the if the scouts have been doing their work, they've been watching videos for two years ago, because there's no way any team wants to sign him on the strength of the last the last twelve months. Even though he was still a top goal scorer, they must have just been watching his fucking YouTube highlights because his attitude's been abysmal. And 50, to, Fifteen million reportedly, it's a good bit of money, though, isn't it? I'm glad to see the back him. Fifteen million, which means that we get that like, two and two and a half on top of the nine and two and a half or. Three on top of the nine and two goes to PSG. Yeah. So essentially, it's only a it's only a three million profit on him. But when you see the return that he's gave us within the first three years, you know it's a he's more than paid his back. So yeah. I don't grudge him the, the move. I just I'm not surprised that he's not went to a bigger club. The other one going out, obviously Ryan Christie. Chris, coming to you first because you were his biggest critic last season. <laughs> Point you told just almost about told his dad about it. Charlie Christie dreams of going to Monaco to watch his son have been broken. If you listen to that <laughs> back in, in the football daft archive, uh, he's now going to be heading to Bournemouth. <laughs> I bet you know what they say Bournemouth is the Monaco of England. <laughs> is that what they say? Is it? I don't so know. He was should. talking in code all along. Exactly, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, do, you not, do you not notice? Listen. See, when, when it happened, if you think back, he kept on talking about Eddie Howe and how he's such a big, uh, a big... <laughs> remember, he was, remember he was talking about Eddie Howe and he was going about how uh, Bournemouth had wanted him before and they really wanted to go to Bournemouth and all that. See, if you put that <laughs> in your head, now you're like, ah, you fucking foreshadowed the whole thing. 
I, I mean, again, is it, is it, again, is it a surprising move that he's went to a championship club as opposed to a premiership club? Ah, it really is. Because, I mean, he started to see, you You boys have said he started the season flying, so. He started the season flying, but then in the important games, he's went missing again, so. Here, here's a question. You've panned him for about a year or two. If mm-hmm. he's that shite, why are you surprised he's only went to a championship team? Because, again, it's as if like, he walks into the Scotland team, people seem to think he's this fucking superstar, so they're better, they're better equipped to know than I am. But I'm watching him in games and he's not doing anything. You know what I mean? It, it could have been down to the poor coaching, but like I said, um, at the start of this season, even pre-season, he? right up until the second Altmar game and the Rangers game, he was a, probably our, our best player, I would say, Ryan. Aye, Jim. Ryan, you were saying he was phenomenal start of the season, weren't you? He has been, to be fair, like, every game that I've that I've watched him, minus obviously the one at the weekend there, like in the, the Altmar game, he's been tremendous. Like, everything went through him. It was a, a massive threat on either wing. It was a massive threat coming from midfield. Um, like we, we said last year, it was it was so disappointing last year, but it, I don't think it was down to him being a, a shite player. I think everybody knew fine well what he had in his locker. He just didn't show it. Same as Edward last season, didn't show it. Whereas this season, bit of a change at Lennox Town. New managers came in, bit of confidence in him. He's been playing really well. So... I think even last season, I think players like Christy and Edward, although their attitude was shite last year, they should be going to far bigger teams than the one they've went to. The teams are going to now just scream total mediocrity. Christy going to the, the Championship, that's horrendous. Ryan Christy should be going to a team in the Premier League easily. Um, Edward going to Crystal Palace, Edward could have went to a bigger team than Crystal Palace. Like the, what's, what's he going to get going there? Fair enough, you get money, right? And I, I'm... One of these guys, as much as you get paid a lot of money for going to a team like Crystal Palace, you could triple your wages, whatever. For me, playing nights in Europe, you know, playing Europa League, Champions League, up and up with Celtic whenever we get in the Champions League next season, or going to play Crystal Palace, like it, it's a stepping stone for a bigger club down there. Aye, but it also might not work out. And I'm just we need to take into account as well, Ryan. I see that the Champions League games and the Europa League games, that's at the most six to eight games a season, right? He's put me selling the shop one day every single week down there playing for Crystal mm. Palace. You know what I mean? So, and, and I, it's worldwide, so... It, may, you know, maybe so. Look, see, if you're right, that might just be that might just be me. That's just my, my thought. I mean, I mean he's, put, he's had his European... Every, these players want to play in the Premier League, didn't they? Aye. That's the main thing, isn't it? Oh, for, for Palace. Well, well, talks, man. I know it's I know it's Palace, but it's you know it's mm. it's the lure of playing in the Premier League, isn't it? That's and what is it. also a huge attraction is London. You need to remember that as it's well. A shout. Do you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. Crystal Palace are I'm watching watch the transfer deadline, man, and like teams like Brighton are paying fucking fourteen million or that for right backs. You can't yeah. there, what's the crack? What's the crack we, we um I've tried to find about the boy that played with us last season, he's he signed for he signed for Celtic. Aye, Kieran. Aye. Kieran Dixon. Aye. This happened just today. I've I've not seen anything, but that was just a, a thing I saw. Yeah. I don't know. It was just a thing, mate. It was a, I'd only seen a photo. I'm holding the Celtic top, but apparently he was hanging. He was highly rated, and he he kind of went after the rails, and Rangers got rid of him. So. Well, there we go. Let's talk about let's talk about the other ends coming into Celtic. Then definitely confirm Philip Jota coming in. Have you been on YouTube to check him out yet, boys? I've just got. Of course, his... course you have. Of course you have. Wikipedia says that he uh, will finish the top scorer in the 2018 UEFA European Championship with the under 19s. He was the top scorer with five goals. 18 uh, under 21 caps, five goals. Um, looks. I mean, on his Wikipedia, looks like a great player. I've watched two videos on him, John. Right. Right. And one makes him look so lightweight that he's never going to do anything in Scotland. And the other one makes him look like, see one of the cunts that comes on at half time and does the keepy ups. <laughs> Honestly, like, he's a pure box of tricks in one of these videos. So it's like, right. okay. probably, probably want to meet somewhere in the middle. Right. So, okay. So he's, he's a good looking wee boy and all. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I, I just saw. I just. I just saw a picture of him. He's a good looking lad. He's a good looking lad. Oh and on to Lee Griffiths. He's a weighted Dundee. <laughs> he's, he's trying to cancel that one deal. Right. 
<laughs> and the other one that you brought in um, is the the Greek striker. Uh, I'm here to go. Go on, John. Go on. Yeah. George, yes. Gia Kumaki. Kumaki. Gia Kumaki. Gia Kumaki. I believe it. I believe it's pronounced Yorios. Yorios. Gia Kumaki. Yakumaki. Yakumaki. I don't know what his name mate, is. Do you, John, do you know what? I can do one better than that, mate. I remember I called uh, Jura Gardens when we played them in Europe, the Jurgadens. <laughs> <laughs> and I get a piss right, right at me. <laughs> Giacomakis. Giacomakis. That's how I'm going for it. I've got a Greek cousin. I'm going to go and ask him to pronounce it. Giacomakis. Uh, YouTube saying good things about him, boys. Good. Well. Again. Again. <laughs> Again. I, I, said, I said Ryan a video. Right, he looks like Marco Van Basten, but then I watched another video and he looks like fucking Tony Cascarino. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it. looking at his Wikipedia he stats, goal again, uh, yeah, he but... appears he's 26 goals. Fucking uh, hell. Aye, but how many were penalties, Chris? Was it 15 or penalties? I think, I think it was eight were penalties, but Is it? still, still, um, to get that, to get that return for a team that get relegated. A five-year fucking deal has been handed to him. Five years. See if he's that good. Why is there no Dutch teams coming in for him? Because he's been the top goal scorer on the air. Right. It's a and very good question, Chris. It's a very good question. Um, fucking, I, I don't know about this man. I'm going to be honest. I don't know about this man. If he, if he turns out to be the next coming up here, Van Hoydonk, then fucking magic. But I don't know. Has the inevitable quote from uh, someone speaking to Samaras, has that happened yet? Because I've missed that. If that, cause That's what always happens. They go to Rex. No, because he was why, fucking why straight enough. Why doesn't somebody speak to fucking Barkas? Well, that's a good point. <laughs> but he was meant to be on his way out, Chris. I'd heard today that Barkas was on his way. Who else was on his way? A really surprising name that was on the, the short list of someone going out today. Well, Ball and Goy wasn't surprising, but Barkas. And who else was meant to be going on their way today? There was talkie Turnbull going, but I don't think that's going to happen. Right. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't know. It's probably probably be a yeti will be left with fucking. A yeti was the other one. The yeti was the other one. That's the one that surprised me. Um. So both sides of you, uh, Stephen Gradle, would you like to see? I, I guess an R striker. Maybe an R striker coming in. Uh, but after the failure, I get no get out of Champions League. If we manage to keep a hold of the team that's there. I'd be quite happy. You'd be quite happy to keep keep Aye. the team. It, it, surprisingly, I mean, everyone. We all thought that there would be a going out. Barisic going out. Uh, Roma was. Looked like it when that. you seen the images that Sky had at the end of the game. Because I came out. Well, I maybe it was green because he knew he had to stay. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Well, I came out. Yeah. Ibrox bouncing, man. Then I had all these text messages saying Barisic is green. It looks like he's awesome. It was like a buzzkill, man. But like I said, the failure. I know making the Champions League. Somebody has to go, maybe. I, I'm, I'm just re- realistic, you know what I mean? It's, it could, this could have been a lot worse. This, I mean, it's not ended yet. Yeah. But I mean, we've still, still got three hours. But what I will say, lads, is just be careful what you wish for because the transfer window closed last season and I was buzzing because we'd managed to keep a holiday <laughs> and all of them. And we got Shane Duffy and all. And, and do you know what? See if you're keeping players there that don't want to be there. I'm not saying that the Rangers players don't want to be there. What I'm saying is, if you're keeping players that don't want to be there, then it can have a fucking disastrous effect on, on the team. That's I, I think, on see the, the, the stuff with Barisic, kissing the ground and all that, he's had a bit of, he's not had a good, he's, fu- he's been out of form, he's maybe just been, oh, he's, he's watched Barisic take his place in a, a couple of games. I know, mate, mate, I think you've got a, you might be right there, because he has had a bit of a turbulent few months when you look mm. at Croatia and all that, and how he getting a game, being injured, then he has been. Aye, it could have just been that. I, I like Barisic, and I think we've got a good core there, man. There's a good, you can tell on Sunday, they all fucking. It's a good, it's a good group of players, man. Yeah, man, but, I have to get again, in the night man. You'll agree with me here. That's what I was saying last season. I was like, oh, we got a great core of players. You've got fucking uh, a goalie, you've got uh, the centre half, Ayer, you've got the midfield, uh, McGregor, and and Turnbull and up front you've got Edward. That's a great spiny team. But like I said, if there's people there, if there's one bad apple, ruins the punter. So you fucking I thought I bit <laughs> What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I'm saying if the players that you're one saying bad apple, <laughs> a good, a good score. 
Right. Aye. It's the same bunch of boys with last season that won the league. I know, but, the, but what I'm saying is, if they don't want to be there anymore, who's who do not want to be there? Well, who, you are saying that you have been saying over the past couple of weeks that uh, get uh, Goldson doesn't want to be there. He doesn't want to sign a new deal. Kamara doesn't want to sign a new deal. But if they're wanting away and no teams have come in for them, then do you know that that could get their heads down, and that's what's happened with Celtic. Last year, all oh, I'm man. saying is it's not always a great thing to keep a, a successful team together. That's all. Well, thanks for the advice, Chris. Thank this you. Is, I'm, I'm just try, still trying to work out. I don't think that bad apple does make the rest of the bad apples. I know you just look <laughs> at the bad <laughs> apple. I think that's with bananas. I think that works with bananas, but I don't no, think that works with apples. Still. You know, how many apples are in a punnet? Go to Google, right, and type in one bad apple. Right. Wait, how many? Uh, how many? Uh, nah, uh, nah, mate, you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 Chris. Oh, it's a rage quit. Chris is no, gone. No, 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 he's I'm gone. Still I'm still here. <laughs> no, I thought he'd rage he's quit. Googling Chris. He's googling it. Chris, Chris, <laughs> I, I've, I've typed in one bad apple and I've got a song by the fucking Osmonds. <laughs> <laughs> I must not, I must not. Um, right, uh, Ryan, Chris. One, sorry, it's one bad apple ruins the bunch. I apologise. Right, uh, right. Uh, Ryan, Chris, before the uh, transfer deadline shuts down, what do you want to see come in? Uh, I'm guessing defender, left back. Two Anges. Two Anges. No. Uh, I would really like, I, I'd like a winger. I'd like a winger in, I'd like a left back. You've got Jota in, he's a winger, you've got Jota in, surely. I know, but I, I'd like an R one. You like an um, R one? And a left back and a centre back. Left back and a centre back. Do you think I'll that will happen? I'll tell you, man, see, no. see, for, see for shit kicking a boot there in the last minute, man, and we've let a thing go, I would try and make a move for Nisbet. Oh, there, was, there, there, was, there, there was chat, uh, Nisbet going to Swansea today, um, he wasn't trained with Scotland. The other chat I heard, it was going about, it was Troy Deeney was kicking about Glasgow the day. That, oh, well, that. Rangers don't need another centre half. <laughs> <laughs> so, Troy, Troy did he sign for Birmingham? Oh, did he sign for Birmingham? Right. Birmingham right. Man, I, what a shame. That was, that was fucking. That went mental yesterday. That, was that his agent that posted that on Instagram or something? Uh, it was a 40 Ibrox, wasn't it? Right. After, after the game, man, see, like, who was it done it before? It was uh, your man, Jack Wilshire. I remember the night when Ailey, there was pure, remember Grado when Warburton was there, there was pure the, the massive rumour that we were signing Van Persie. Oh, that was mental that <laughs> night. Uh, and then we get Joey Garner. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a good song out of it at least, do you know what I mean? Uh, You've got a did. good song out of it. So that was like a, a number bit, one record. I got a buzz. Yeah. Do you remember I listened to that Troy Dini on a podcast? I come on here raving about him. Oh, so yeah, I was yeah, excited, yeah. remember? Uh, Troy Delaney or something like that. <laughs> Troy <laughs> Delaney. <laughs> right, there we go then, boys. We'll see what happens. Obviously, we'll be talking about the transfer deadlines on Football Daft this week. Um, we'll be back on that with Friday. We'll be back with the Football Daft. Football Daft meets Kevin Thompson. You can hear that. It's out on the channel. It's out really chat. Brilliant yeah. chat with Kevin Thompson. Really, really interesting. Um, surprised the papers haven't picked up on some of the stuff he said in it. So if you've not listened to that yet, go and have a listen to that. Um, Rangers Celtic Daft off next week because international break. We'll be back in two weeks. With, uh, we'll separate them back out. We'll pull them apart again. <laughs> Thank <laughs> fuck for that. Uh, and we'll get together again for the next old from Rangers Daft versus Celtic Daft. Gents, thank you very much as ever. Um, remember, you can subscribe to Football Daft. Get subscribed on Apple. Leave us a wee review. That'd be really, really nice. We'd really, really appreciate that. Um, we'll be back with the main show on Friday. Until, oh, God, this is when I normally go to Grado and Stephen say, until next time. And then, why don't we do, like, all together, so you guys say we are the people, and you guys do hail, hail, right? And we'll do. I'll be like a hands John, across the divide John, moment. John, John, I have no interest in that, mate. Brilliant. All right then. Fine. Right. Until next. <laughs> <laughs> a pure classic Falkirk fan, man. Right, Why guys, I make room for Like, come you, on, guys, come on. You, hold hands. There. you say we are the people, and you say hail, hail, and we'll all meet in the middle. Yeah. Hi, Stevie. It's like that Limp biscuit concert all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, until next time, um, listen to football, Daft. See you later. Bye. <laughs>